Well, welcome to the next video in the series through the book of Ezra. If you are new to my channel, then I do encourage you to subscribe, like this video, and then you will get notifications of future videos. Uh, we've been on a journey through Ezra over the last uh, few videos. Uh, we saw in chapter one how God stirred the hearts of his people. He stirred the heart of Cyrus to bring the people home in order to rebuild the temple. And that really is the focus of chapter 1 all the way up to Ezra chapter 6. The focus is on God finishing the building on the temple. In chapter 3, we saw them worshipping God. Um, and that worship started from a right knowledge of God that then overflowed from the heart and was both seen and heard. But in our previous video in chapter 4, we saw opposition arrive, uh, arising and it brought the work on the temple to a screeching halt. But here in chapters 5 and 6, thankfully, we see um, God to the rescue, which is what I call this section. God to the rescue. God really is the hero of uh, this section. It is a longer section. We're going to look at the whole of chapter 5 and the whole of chapter 6. So if you haven't done that already, I really do encourage you to, to read through these two chapters and familiarize yourself with the story. I'm going to, as always, just show a few things that I've seen in working through the story. I'm just going to start with a little bit of structure. So I saw verse uh, 1 and 2 as just giving us the setting of the story. And then all the way from 5 verse 3, all the way to chapter 6 verse 5. So a big section um, setting up the conflict in the story. And then chapter 6 verse 6 and 7 giving us the climax of the story which we see then resolving um, in the rest all the way down to verse 16 and then from verse 16 onwards a new setting is given with this uh, joyful celebration of God's faithfulness and as I said God is the hero of the story and we see God at work in phenomenal ways throughout the story um, so just showing this uh, setting or this uh, structure, I, I used the narrative plot arc to see that. Um, so we've got our setting, um, 5 verse 1 and 2. Um, so the word of the Lord, uh, God working through his word to get the people going again. Then we've got our conflict. Um, as we see um, opposition arising and a letter going off to uh, King, King Darius. And you're just kind of wondering, well, is this opposition going to do what it did in chapter 4 and stop the work again? And this then brings us to uh, the point of climax in many ways in this story. Um, so that is 6 verse 6 to 7 where thankfully Darius, God uses Darius as part of his great work. God stirs Darius so that he orders that the temple be rebuilt. And we see the story then uh, resolving in incredible ways. Um, as Darius orders that the work is to be fully funded, to be unopposed, God's people then uh, finish the temple, which you could see as uh, another climax um, within the story. So where they, they finish building in chapter 6 verse 14. And then we're given a new setting. Where we see God's people joyfully celebrating God's faithfulness. And that's what I want us to see as we go through. We'll see that God really is the hero of this story, doing incredible things as we dig through this section. As I already said, the building of the house of God in Jerusalem is the focus of chapters 1 to 6. And we see uh, that is in focus throughout this section.
So as you can see, a very big focus on uh, the temple being built. Um, and in this section where the, the letter goes to King Darius, you're wondering, well, is it going to be stopped again? Thankfully, we see that when Darius finds this letter in Echbatana, it starts, or this um, scroll at least, it starts by saying, let the temple be rebuilt. So God is at work in all the details, making sure that he finds uh, this, this scroll. And thankfully, that then results in verse 14, they finished building the temple. So that's what we've been uh, focusing in on for the whole first half of Ezra. In chapter 7, we jump to the next generation, actually, and we see Ezra returning with another group, um, and it's a whole different story. So chapter 6 brings us to the end of the first part in the book of Ezra. Now, I call this section God to the Rescue, and we see God at work in many different ways in this section. Um, firstly, we see that he raises up Haggai and Zechariah, the prophets, um, and they want to, he's telling them to build in the name of the God who is over them. They prophesied in the name of the God who is over them, and the prophets were with them, supporting them. Uh, we see um, Haggai and Zechariah mentioned again. Uh, the work prospered under the preaching of Haggai and Zechariah. Um, and they finished building according to the command of God, the God of Israel. Um, so we see that God is at work in this section. Now, if you go and dig into um, Haggai and Zechariah's prophecies, which are recorded for us, particularly Haggai's prophecy, you'll see that they had got their priorities wrong. In Haggai chapter 1, they were building their paneled houses rather than building this temple of God, which was the focus of what they should have been doing back in the promised land. Um, but if you think back to chapter 3, at the end of chapter 3, we saw the older generation weeping. And that kind of discouraged them. They stopped working. Where in Haggai chapter 2, Haggai comes and says, don't worry, this might look like nothing to you. It might not look as good as Solomon's temple, but the glory of this house is going to be greater than the glory of the former house. So the prophets are there really encouraging them to keep going. Um, we see also in verse 5, it says, but the eye of their God was watching over them. So the opposition comes again. But the eye of God is watching over them, and we get these wonderful words, and they were not stopped. This time the work did not come to a grinding halt. Now the enemies um, send this letter to Darius. They give the report that they were actually given by God's people, and here we see their focus. They say, we are servants of the God of heaven and earth. They know that they are doing his work. So he is the hero of this story, and Without, uh, throughout this, we see God at work in the details. God say, uh, in their letter, they also say um, that Cyrus had sent them home and issued a decree that they rebuild the temple. Then the enemies actually ask Darius, uh, search, see if you can find uh, this decree from King Cyrus. And we start seeing absolutely amazing things happen. Firstly, we see here in chapter 6 that they search in Babylon, but the scroll is found in Echbatana. Now, Echbatana was where Cyrus had spent his summer in his first year. So actually giving this detail about the first year of Cyrus was very important. It sparked them to look in the right place. They couldn't find the scroll in Babylon, so they knew, okay, Cyrus was in Echbatana in his first year. Let's look there. God was at work in the details so that the scroll was found. And then we see uh, King Darius saying, okay, so now I found the scroll. It says that the temple should be rebuilt, so stay away from there. Don't interfere. Let the work happen. 
Let the governors rebuild. But it gets even better than that. He says their expenses are to be paid. So he fully funds the work out of uh, his own money, the revenues of the trans-Euphrates. God is at work in all of the details. Uh, <laughs> Darius then says, and if you don't obey me, uh, you're going to be killed and your house is going to be destroyed. So Darius is making sure that this work continues. Ultimately, God is making sure that his work continues. And so his people continue. They prosper under the preaching of Haggai and Zechariah and they finish this great work. And what we see in this section is they are seeking to live according to what is written, which is what we saw in chapter 3 as they wanted to know God, that right understanding of God overflowed and was seen and heard. We see that theme being picked up again. They are now a people who are wanting to seek God properly. And they've built this house of the God of Israel. In the last few verses, um, in the, the new setting we're given, we see this repetition that they celebrated with joy, in Nehemiah, so the next part of this uh, Ezra-Nehemiah section, we hear them uh, saying, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so this celebration with joy is them trusting in God. They know that God is the hero of the story. They're seeking him. They're wanting to do his work. And he is the one who strengthens them to do it. He stirs them through his word, under the preaching of the prophet uh, Haggai and Zechariah, he's the one who enables them to find this scroll in Echbatana. He's the one who stirs Darius's heart to respond the way he does. He doesn't say stop the work. He actually says fund the work, make sure that nothing will stop the work. So God is very much the hero of this story in chapters 5 and 6. And we see as God is the hero of the story, the, the work prospers. We see that idea in chapter 6 and in the report. It is they're doing it with diligence and it's making rapid progress. Uh, that word there is the same. It's the word, it's prospering. The work is prospering because they are seeking to do God's work with God's help. So the prophets are with them. The prophets didn't just start them with the work. They're there with them. Uh, so that God, through his word, is enabling them to continue with this work. And so we see in a wonderful way how God is at work in all the details, ensuring that his work will be completed. And that is what we see throughout the scriptures. God will achieve his good purposes. Uh, we see that ultimately in the story of Jesus where all the details, as God had sent these people home to Jerusalem, that is just setting the stage for God's people in Jerusalem welcoming the Messiah. These people finishing the building of the temple is just setting the stage for many years later when that curtain and that temple tore as Jesus uh, opened the way, opened the access for all people to know and be saved by God. So we see God at work in all the details throughout Scripture. And we see that is the truth in our own lives as his people. God continues to work through his word, which is why we must keep studying his word. But God is also at work in all the details. He will achieve his purposes. And like these people in Ezra's day, we want to continue to be about his work. So as you dig into this section and teach it um, to others. I pray that we will get a big view of God as the God who rescues. He's the hero of this story. He's still the God who is at work today. And so we want to trust him as we continue with his great work. Well, God bless as you dig in further.